What's going on YouTube? Thanks for stopping by. My name is Michael, also known as Hyrule Dude. Today we're going to be going over part 8 of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild walkthrough. So, we're currently at Zora's Domain. We're going to be making our way over to the Gerudo area, uh, and we're going to meet with the princess there. So, looking at the map, this is where we currently are. We're going to transport to the Ken Namit Shrine, and from there we're going to be heading over to this Divine Beast here. So, uh, that is the plan. And we're going to be traveling along this route here, as you can see here in the map. So uh, let's go ahead and make our transport now and begin this journey. So once we make it to the shrine, uh, if we go behind the shrine, we're going to see a ledge here um, with an expansion chest. So if you don't have the DLC, there will be no chest here. Uh, if you do, there is one available. There's also a Korok seed, so for those that don't have the DLC, uh, it's still beneficial to make this journey here. So I'm going to just go ahead north from the treasure chest, and I'm going to take out my fire arrow, which I'm going to then use to melt this ice block and reveal the Korok seed. All right, so let's go ahead and collect this. Sweet, so from here we're gonna go south, and if we look over the edge, we're going to see a shrine, and we're going to paraglide to the western direction from here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and just land on top of this mountain here. From there, I will paraglide to the shrine. It's also a much easier way to travel instead of running on foot. Uh, it's just much quicker to just paraglide over. Now, I'm going to go ahead and complete the G No Shrine, um, but I'm not going to have it in this video. So from here, uh, we're going to continue heading in the northern direction again, uh, pulling out the map. We're going to be following this trail here. Now, along the journey, there's a few things you're going to want to get. You're going to want to hunt the animals along the way, and then you're also going to want to collect the insects along the way, namely the coal darners. Uh, which basically look like dragonflies, uh, and then also the winter wing butterflies. These are going to be important because we're going to be creating some really powerful elixirs to help us in our journey, uh, which are going to be absolutely required because of what we're going to be enduring uh, coming up. So uh, make sure to collect these along the way. All right, and this is where I am on the map, and right around here is where you'll start seeing the insects. To do that, you just need to crouch and go really slow, and you'll be able to catch them quite easily. All right, and those are some cold darners there. And a winter wing butterfly right here. So moving along down the path, this is where I am currently on the map. A little further up, we're going to see this huge stone, and it's going to be right here on the map, as you can see. And so this is going to indicate that we're getting very close to the stable, which is the Gerudo Canyon Stable. And next to the stable is going to be the tower that we're going to be activating. So um, here at the stable, there's a few things that we're going to want to do. So let's go ahead and talk to Beetle, who's inside of the stable. And let's pick up any insects that he has um, so that we can start our cooking process. He's also going to give you an ancient arrow for free, which is pretty awesome.
Now, he's telling me about Old Robbie, which is where you can get your ancient arrows. And he's going to be in the Akala region, which is the upper right hand uh, of the map. But uh, we're not going to be doing that at this moment. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up his arrows. I'm going to pick up a hardy lizard and the warm darners, uh, since I already have some winter wing butterflies. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and cook up some very potent recipes that are gonna be very important on our journey ahead. So let's go ahead to the cooking pot right outside of the stable and uh, get to cooking. We're gonna be using four cold darners and one keese eyeball. That is going to give us a very nice chili elixir that lasts 13 minutes and 10 seconds, and it's a high-level elixir. The next recipe is going to be four warm darners and uh, moblin guts, and that's going to give me 13 minutes and 10 seconds of a high-level warming effect spicy elixir. So that's perfect, and that's all we're really going to need. But while I'm here, I'm going to cook up a few more very potent dishes um, just for the journey. And the first one is just going to be a hearty radish. A single hearty radish uh, is going to give me full stamina recovery plus three hearts. The next thing is going to be a staminoka bass, and that's going to give me an energizing fish skewer. Um, that's going to replenish my stamina wheel. And then finally, I'm going to cook a hearty truffle that also is going to give me a full recovery plus one heart. <laughs> From here, I am done with my cooking. As you can see behind me, there is a tower in the distance. So I'm going to rest here overnight uh, and then make my journey to that tower. Now Link is all refreshed and we are on our way. So I'm going to go ahead and climb up to the top of this little cliff here. And there is a treasure chest that contains a Gerudo Simtar. Now on the way, I'm going to complete this hey no shrine here um just to have a quick access point for traveling and this is where the fun begins because we're gonna hop on the makeshift elevator uh which is pretty fun to ride uh so let me go ahead and climb up this wall and i am going to use my magnesis to basically just take the blocks off and manipulate the weight on this platform which is going to then serve as an elevator to the top. So you have to be a little careful. I messed up multiple times uh, and it's a little funky as you can even see here. Um, but it, it is fun though, it is fun. And it's also a pain at the same time. All right, so watch out for this Lizafos. Um, you could just freeze them and either push them over the ledge or leave them there and climb the ladder, making your way closer to the top of this mountain here. It is super fun using the Frost Spear, which I obtained in... Uh, my last video in the Zora's Domain, uh, it's super fun using that on these enemies because <laughs> there's absolutely nothing they can do. You just freeze them and then throw them over the ledge. I'm going to do the same thing, but he's going to try to attack me, so let me just do a backflip and freeze him up. <laughs> Alright, cool. Let's -a go. Alright, so as you can see, we're getting much, much closer to the tower. I'm going to go ahead and shock this moblin. 
hit him with the frost spear and send him on his way. It is a super long journey in between these two if you don't have a horse and there's really no way to really have a horse in this section. Now there are a lot of enemies up above uh, so just be aware of that. Don't get it caught off guard where you just you know climb up and uh, suddenly are immediately attacked once you get over. So I give myself enough space here. Um, try to electrocute this moblin, didn't work. So we'll just, as usual, freeze him up. All right. So I love blowing up the choo-choo's, especially the electric choo-choo's and the fire choo-choo's um, just by pulling out a bomb and letting it roll out and just, you know, it's kind of fun. So here by the tower, there are some goodies here though. So take out your magnesis. There's two cool treasure chests. There's a couple other things in here, but this is all I usually grab. This treasure chest has five bomb arrows and the other treasure chest has a sapphire. grab our sapphire and from here you can see these three rock slabs I'm gonna go ahead and use my cryonis to build blocks make a walkway to get to the top of these slabs and then make my way towards the tower um, where it's much easier to get to the first platform because it's so high up um, so this is the easiest way to do it really unless you have Revali's Gale this early in the game um, which it's very well possible because you can do this game in any order. All right, just barely made it to the top. Let's go ahead and activate the tower. Alright, so from here, if you look over, you're going to see the Divine Beast in the distance, uh, which we're going to be completing uh, in the next video. And you'll also see two towns. The first one is Karakara Bazaar. Put a marker right here on Gerudo Town. That's where we're going to be heading first. Uh, but we will be making a trip to the Karakara Bazaar Town as well. So I made a bunch of energizing dishes over at the stable. So I hope you did too. Uh, that's going to allow me to do a very far paraglide uh, over to my destination. There's also this cool little town to the right where you can pick up a few good things as well. But we're going to be flying right over that to the western side. Looks like I'm going to have to load up on stamina again. And we're coming in for a landing in 5, 4, 3, 2, 
one zero. Okay, we landed. So, we're just going to take it on foot from here. Right in front of the city, there's a shrine. Definitely make sure to complete this one because there's gonna be a lot of going back and forth between here and other locations. It's gonna be a huge time saver by being able to access this shrine. So go ahead and complete the shrine in front of Gerudo Town. And after that, you're gonna see this character named Benja outside of the town walls. Um, he's basically spying, um, and in this town, you have to be a woman to enter the town. I know, it's crazy, right? They will absolutely not let you inside if you're not a woman, so he's giving us some information about a guy who has woman's clothing, uh, that allows you to enter into the Gerudo town. Um, so the first town that we pass by, it's called Karakara Bazaar. We're going to go ahead and travel from here back to Karakara Bazaar, and then we're going to meet this dude with women's clothes who's going to then hook us up with what we need. So let's go ahead and grab a sand seal. It's very easy. You just throw a bomb at them, which stuns them. And then from there, you could just grab onto its tail, make sure you have a shield on your back, and you'll be able to ride it out into the sunset. All right, so the temperature is getting pretty hot, it says here. I'm going to go ahead and use one of my elixirs. Um, but on the map, as you can see here, we're heading to this location where we're putting a purple marker on. Uh, so I'm going to delete the red pin, put the purple marker on, and that is our destination. All right, so now we have heat resistance for 13 minutes. How awesome is that? So I hope you did follow along and I hope you did make those recipes because uh, they are priceless. And the trip to the next town is very, very quick and we are actually already here. Now this huge tall structure here in the town uh, is where we need to go. We actually need to get to the top of this structure here. That's where we're going to meet this guy who's going to give us the female clothing. And there he is. His name is Vilia. And uh, let's go ahead and talk to him. It's going to require 600 rupees to purchase the clothing. So it's not free. So make sure to either sell some items down below in the town or do something to get that money so that you can get the clothing that we need. Hmm. Oh. All right, so once you've obtained the clothing, we're going to go ahead and transport back to the shrine over at the outside of Gerudo Town, which will allow us to finally enter and speak to the princess. All right, so let's put the clothes on and enter the town. And as you can see, we've had no issues trying to gain entry. Uh, if you go just straight down the center of town, uh, it's gonna lead right to the throne of the princess. And uh, this is where we're gonna run into a pretty cool cutscene. Yet another traveler. How did you get in here? Oh. Seems you have something rather interesting there. Alright, so during this conversation, um, Raiju is going to be questioning me. She notices that I have the Sheikah Slate. 
and I'm telling her that I could calm the divine beast. And they're very hesitant to believe me on my claim. And so they have a lot of questions and they want me to prove myself basically uh, before I do that. So what she's going to want me to do is she's going to want me to get the Thunder Helm, which is something that the Yiga clan, who we've encountered in the world of Hyrule so far, um, has stolen oh. their heirloom. Um, so we need to get it back. And so that's what we're going to be tasked with by Raiju and the guard. We're going to have to speak to Captain Teak, mm -hmm. who's going to give us the details on the thieves um, <laughs> in order for us to be able to locate them and then retrieve the stolen heirloom and become the hero for the princess, thereby granting us access to the divine beast. So let's go ahead and glide over and talk to Teak mm -hmm. and see what she's got to say. So she's advising me that the heirloom is in the Yiga clan hideout in Carusa Valley. Um, she's also going to be asking uh, the crew to help me out. I'm known as the Hylian here. Um, so she is directing me to speak to some of the soldiers to get some info. So after speaking to Teak, we're going to go ahead and talk to Liana, who's the soldier right here. And we're going to ask her where the hideout is. And she's going to let us know that it's in Carusa Valley, which we already know. Um, and if we want to get pointed into uh, the direction, uh, we're going to want to ask the guard at the northwest gate. Uh, so that's what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to head over there and see if we can get pointed in the right direction. This is Lane, and she's going to let me know that uh, I'm at the Northwest uh. Gate, and I'm going to go ahead and ask her where the hideout is. Oh. Man, news must really get around quick because she already knew about me, but she's going to go ahead and point to the direction that I need to go. Uh, you can't see Carusa Valley from this location, but that is the direction. Good thing for us, it's a pretty straightforward path. So that is it. So that is going to be the next thing that we do. Um, she's also letting us know that if we need a sand seal, uh, we could certainly get one from the shopkeeper. So uh, let's go ahead and put a marker here. That is going to be the next destination that we're going to do in the next video. And that about wraps things up, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I love you all. May God bless us all and keep us all safe. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Cheers.